about a million to a million five will work for a contractor. Uh, you're more likely to get bids, and you're more likely to be more competitive as opposed to to just uh, to just us doing it alone. So anyway, that's just a suggestion. <coughs> Remember I asked you about the, when uh, we talked about it the last time about trying to get into an interlocal agreement like with the school districts mm -hmm. too, you mm -hmm. know, to fix up streets around the school district because yeah. I know the city of San Antonio does it. Right. You know, I mentioned it to you about right. how, you know, my son has to go out and do all that yeah. stuff, you know. And we, we would like to, and again on that end, uh, counsel to your point, I think from my standpoint, um, looking at the schools, um, and I think the city at one, has, has focused some on the schools, but schools, public institutions, not that other areas are important, but if you look at this road right here, right next mm -hmm. to us, you look at a road right around the courthouse, uh, all that work, I think we may, may say from a priority perspective, it may not be, it might be, not be the top priority, right? Um, but, you know, if we can figure out a way to work we can partner with the school and or the county to, mm -hmm. to improve some of the roads. Yeah. That would be a, a benefit, I think, for everybody. Um, but I think Hector, in my opinion, I think they've done, in my opinion, I think they've done some great work uh, with the base work they've done, because that, to me, is is more than half the challenge. I was, I'll be quite frank with you, I was a bit worried. I said, damn, what if they mess this thing up? Um, but I was, I was concerned in the sense that if you mess up the base, then you're really gonna have a tough time having a decent street and they've done they've done a good job as far as I'm concerned. They they uh, they work with the equipment they've had. They, they, and we don't even have we rent the equipment, but they've done a good job of, of, of giving you pretty good streets or good overlays. So anyway, just a, just a suggestion, but but that is going to be the goal for us to set this to a plan. I think council members. I mean, I I actually think we should you know mentor an interlocal agreement with the with the county and the school district because. The citizens that live here in the city, in the city, you know, they also pay county taxes. So, you know, at least the county can do that for us, you know, and have, help us out, you know, by by getting it done, right. you know, in the school district as well. Okay. Any, any more questions on the streets? I would want to revisit this list. I think there's some other streets out there, especially with the with the that right on the west side. Of Which the list are you referring to? Um, the one way we have to still left here with the Walnut Street and the running drive on it. Okay. Oh, the, yes. Okay. Yes, that one. But three, what's remaining on that okay. list? Um, okay. I think some of these streets are pretty okay for right now, um, opposed to other streets. Uh, like I said, I I gotten many, 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 a lot of feedback from in the precinct three area that it really does not touch on that in that area. Mm -hmm. in, in Hawaii, why are we looking over this? Is this because it's your lower income in the van? I mean, that's what we, that's what we need to need in on it. I mentioned Davila Street, that's one of your big one around the park. Yes. Uh -huh. So it that's, is. that's you know, that's what we're looking at there. Um, Where's that again? It's on this, there's another list, by the way. If you look at it, Crystal, can you go to the next one? Mm -hmm. uh, these are the streets that, uh, the original ones, there's Davila's in there. Um, Davila's in there, and, so that 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 was the, the staff recommended streets. Uh, if you notice the very can I touch it? Uh, if you notice the very last one on tab, you, it is on the east side, but that that probably should have made the top two. It, it, it's horrible, like absolutely horrible. Uh, the the problem is why it's at the bottom of the list because there is some research. If if you notice the caption up there. They were prioritized based on the condition, the cause of deterioration, and the traffic regularly traveled. That's the school zone. That's, I mean, and, and it, it's absolutely horrible. I can't tell you enough how, how bad it is. Almost as bad as number one, but it's not, not there yet, but it's pretty close. It should have been number two, but it's at number 10 because the research done on it, uh, the infrastructure, that's even worse. That, that, that line right there, the, the, the wastewater line underneath that road is absolutely horrendous. And then to take on a project that size, I mean, we're looking at a lot, a lot, a lot of money, a lot of money. So what we do, we, we, we basically just do a bandaid on it. You know, we, we fix it, and that's why we haven't fixed that rule. That should have been, that should have been a top priority. Here. And these are the recommendations that I prefer to hear. Expert recommendations, like yourself, to say, you know, telling the council, this is what my recommendation is. 
not necessarily put it in the, in the hands of the council to say, you know what, well, these are the streets that we want. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we want that expert opinion from you guys in analysis coming in from there to say, you know what, this is where, what it is. Is it, is it a, an attraction to the city? Is it something that we really should jump on? That's what I would, I would prefer to hear. Hector, can you give, give some, just some idea of why the first three or four rows there you felt there? The first, well, and all I have to do is touch on number one. Number one is, it's, it's absolute, hands down, the, the most decrepit street we have in Pierce Hall. It, it is horrible. You can't even drive on that. That one's gonna take, it's a little bit more involved on that one. That one's gonna take curb and gutter. So you're gonna have to not only fix the street, but fix the curb and gutter because of the water shedding that Mother Nature does to it. it it's, it's horrible because of the collection and what we in the city do to it as well. We, we, we by rule, we have to uh, release our water from our storage tanks after a certain age, stuff like that, and, and it just happens to travel down that way. So by installing the curb and gutter, we'll, we'll suppress that issue and then fix it in the street with its courses. Mother Nature does its thing too. I mean, we, we've had weeds this high going on the street. So we cut them regularly, but it, it just come right back, you know, so it, it's time to get fixed. That, that's why that one made number one. Number two, West Medina, that's a, a project that we, we internally started um, by on the cross on the cross street, but we noticed that as we're doing it, that uh, Mulberry, and it's, and it's, it's Man, it's our, it's our lengthiest, one of our lengthiest street out there. And it, it's, it, it, the only reason it made number two is because it's, we, we started that street to, as, a, as, a, as, a training to, as a training session for the city, see, if we could, see what we, we could do, just kind of get a gauge as to how much we could do for X amount of money. So the, the balance, and, and it turned out decent, not the greatest, but decent. And, uh, but the balance of that street, it's still decrepit, and it's still, dilapidated uh, so that that's why that one made number two because we, we need to go ahead and finish that street and and the research on the on the on the infrastructure is pretty good on that one we, we haven't had any calls in x number of years so so that means that uh, the utilities are good still and Brazos and mulberry well that's that that made number three it's just one block and and it's it's medium traveled, it's not heavily traveled like some of these other streets, but on Sunday mornings, it's probably the most traveled street in Purisol, because uh, that's how you get to church. And then that, that street is horrible too. And it's full of potholes and stuff like that, and it's and it only made number three because it's only one block long. You know, so Council, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a recommendation on this. The main thing is the budget item, is how much we put in there. And Councilman, you bring up a great idea, and, and two, there's been a lot of people come together to make these different lists, but but our own department heads, I think, have, and, and the, the people have a lot of input on that. So I think the key thing is that we budget funds for that, and then when it comes time, then we hear the data and we go, okay, what's the most we can get for the most amount of money? Um, so all these things, I think we're gonna have this conversation later, really, and ask them to bring it back. I mean, Hector, do you agree? It just, it's my, no. On that end, just, just to speak to that, is whenever, what we've been doing, quite frankly, is we've been um, reacting to, to, to budgets. And what we're doing is we're saying this year, I want to have a bid out by March, February, March. And I want to have streets, these are the streets we're doing. This is the dollar amount. So, so my point is, is we have to have some indication of what streets we want to do, preferably by no later than by budget time when the budget gets approved so we can start preparing and say we're going to do X and if we can work something out with the county or the school during that time it'd be great uh, as far as improvements to the roads but right now we need you know we're going to do these three or four rows whether it's this recommended list or the other list above it um, but, but the idea for us is to, is to be prepared and to put bids out to know that we're going to do this stuff and, and be ready by May or June as opposed to I mean, some of the stuff we wait till yeah. August. Um, we, we kind of, but but the preference is to, is to be prepared and, and put something out in February and March. Well, we I mean, we can go ahead and identify, but there's a there's a there's a whole lot more to it. And I, Fred, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I completely agree that we should do it, but we should yeah. as soon as we get this budget done, start 
start doing that for the, for the, and then ask you guys to bring us all the data with your recommendations and all the the recommendations aren't going to change though. They're, they're not. No, these been they're, they've been said so. Some, so which page? The top page or the bottom page? Yeah, that's what? up to them. But what you're doing the staff, work staff recommended, recommended or the not okay. it's, oh, it's, it's up on the captain there. Okay. The so why don't we let's do that the first meeting in October? Why don't let's bring this back and then council? You guys hear their recommendation and move forward. Um, Fred, have we applied for grants for the streets? No, ma'am. Uh, normally, uh, as it pertains to grants, uh, there are no, there are no, there's very few grants that I'm aware of uh, that will help you with maintenance. There's grants that will help you build something. There's grants that will help you uh, make improvements, but no maintenance. So very that I'm aware of, uh, very few that will help you maintain your streets. Uh, they'll they'll help you build the street. A new street or construct a new street, but they won't help you uh, with maintenance. Mm -hmm. So, how soon can we get to the table of the county and the school? Well, I, I'd uh, I'd like to uh, meet us uh, as uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I, I'd be willing to on that end uh, if they want to talk in a local agreement. Uh, I think I brought it up to the previous county judge. I don't know that that I that I uh, spoke to the, to the school district about it, but I did bring it, bring it up to the previous county judge and. We had discussed the idea of, of paving around all around the county courthouse and this strip, this area here that leads to the courthouse, these two the roads, right? Um, but we never got to it. Um, well, and Councilman, if you'd set something up, I'd be happy to be there. And Councilman, if you tell an office, you'd set, uh, I'm kind of happy to open dialogue right away. And then that way we can kind of see where we're going and, and put it on the agenda. But you guys, please set something up, reach out to me, I'm sure the city manager will join me. And, and we'll sit down and talk. And as confident as I am, I, I'm going to probably put, put them out there. To, <laughs> but I really believe they can. They do a great job at the base. I, and I'm telling you, on that end, they, they do a good job. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised to, to see the work. It takes a while, and you know, we don't have the equipment. Uh, but, but they've done a great job at the base uh, in getting the work prepared, in essence, for, for the overlay, whatever we're going to do. So. Uh, so How think, do you feel about like if they had the proper equipment themselves? It, 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 do you think it'd be um, less? I mean, I'm pretty sure it'd be less money. It, it would be, of course, because we have to rent the equipment. It's expensive. Yeah. The equipment is expensive to rent. Uh, the challenge we run into is, is one is once we own it, it's it's really. I mean, we're talking some of this equipment is really expensive. Um, and then you know we don't use it all the time, um, so it it's, it it turns into a, a one, and then and then the maintenance piece. I would love to, to own some of the pieces, but we're too, from our, my standpoint, we think we're too, a little too small to, to, of a department or to, to be making those big purchases. We're, I mean, we're talking, you know, it's significant. I wouldn't uh, say that. Well, some, some of the stuff we can do again, but again, we're talking like some of the stuff we rent. I don't know. Uh, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but you asked, Hector's going to ask you for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. But, um, but yeah. If not, there is not just to, you know, uh, even through auctions and piggyback off of that. Uh, there is some stuff that we can get, not necessarily the big giant equipment that it takes to re reconstruct the road, but there is some smaller items mm -hmm. that take part in reconstruct the road that we could get. And, and trust me, they're in here. Um, and I'll ask for them a little bit later in the presentation. But uh, but there is stuff. I mean, what he's what y'all are alluding to. There's no way that we'll ever be able to afford it. Talking half a million to three quarters of a million dollars piece of equipment for one piece of equipment. Yeah, for one piece, and it's, it's it's a lot. And then the maintenance on it, it's roughly thirty to forty thousand dollars a year just to maintain the teeth on it, the grinder wheels, and all that stuff. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, that's why they charge what they charge. And the expertise to offer. Yeah, yes, yes, and that, that takes time with expertise, but we'll, we will get there eventually. Um, Anyway, let's go back to the presentation. Are, are we good on streets here? Mm -hmm. uh, no questions on the on the changes on the budget. Nothing. Good. All right. Well, let's get down to the picture play here. Um, these are some of the examples of what we had, what before and after. If you notice that uh, this is that one block road next to the dollar store, and if you notice on the very end over there by Maverick Electric Company, whatever. Um, the turn there was only 18 feet wide before, and it's a 40 foot road. So that, that's how much it deteriorated in there. Now the, the trash people and then the, 
the the 18 wheeler that delivered lumber to Parker Lumber didn't help the situation. But what we did is we, we used a special, uh, I forgot what they call it, uh, it's called a level A, level A uh, base. It's black in color, blackish. And then what that does is hardens up like, like cement. So we did it, and it didn't cost too much extra. We did that because one, it was only one, one block. And two, it'll help with the 18 wheeler traffic that we have in there. And, and, the, and the trash truck that likes to go in there and get the trash can from the road. So we, we put a stop to that, by the way, too. We asked them to go to the parking lot to get to the trash can. Um, so that's basically what we did. We had 28 on one side, 18 feet on the other. We made it all 40, and that's what it looks like now. It's like super smooth. Uh, planned, maybe in the future, putting a curb there, that would help a lot, too with uh, the length of time of this being put it's a last span, but it, for now it is it's superb. It's pretty good, pretty, pretty smooth. The next one is South Willow. Now this one, this is a little tricky because this one here doesn't have hardly any, any ancient wheeler traffic. It does have a lot of, of ranching, you know, deep, further, de further down you go in South Willow, so you get a lot of tractor tractor traffic, so that's why it looks like that. And basically that's what it looks like on the third picture there. It's, that one came out really nice too. So, I don't have any questions. Now this is the one that we partnered up with the, the county. Uh, it looks a little short because it is. It's, it's, it was, instead of three blocks long, it was 2.3 blocks. So it looks, it, it's, there's more to it than that, but that's all we captured on, on the picture. But, that was, that was a seal coat. That one's not an overlay like we normally do. That seems the one difference in, um, that from the other ones that we do. But I didn't have too many picks on that, so I just put those two up there. And this one, the east part, which was the last one we did. And that's pretty much explained it all there. That, that road was had some grass growing and stuff like that. So we, it was pretty bad all the way through. The worst part, unfortunately, we couldn't get to. The tech stop did not allow us to, uh, not that we were going to take it on anyways, because it's concrete. <coughs> so that would have, we would have blown right through that button. You know, we had to fix the concrete. But anyways, we did the balance of it. So the majority of it was decrepit, so we, we, we fixed that. And now it's, it's pretty, it's really decent. And I don't know. Stuff. <laughs> and now, now we get to the, to the good stuff here. Uh, I know it's supposed to be a wish list item section, but it's no, honestly, it's no longer a wish list. I mean, we've gone for two years without any of these items. I mean, we do have, like, so, one of these items we do have, but it doesn't work half. I mean, 99% of the time it doesn't work. We try to use it on Carter right before we fired it up, and it blew up on us. So, I mean, it's it, one of the, the replacement, it didn't make the list, but it's, it's actually the first one. The next slide. This is a jack kettle. It's a, it's, a, it's a kettle. It's what you put on the street prior to doing the overlay. You have to have this stuff here or else it won't stick. So this, ours doesn't work, period. But this one here is a special one. That's why it's a little pricier. This one has um, a crack seeder. It, it, what it does, you can sit there and then ours doesn't. Ours, Ours is about 30000 if you buy it new now, but it doesn't have a crack seat option. You don't have a one. This one, this one has the whole kit and caboodle here. What does this do? It's a, it's a jack kettle. It, it, it heats up the tar, and, and well, the tar for the crack seal, and it also allows you to spray the, the rope. It, see, it heats it for the, uh, for the overlay. Hector, what would we need to do? Uh, part of, can you explain to the council what, what you mean by, by the crack seal, what, what that does? Well, what, this, does that, what does it do to preserve the road? Well, it, it, it seals it basically. It, uh, with our weather being so hot and dry and humid, we we form cracks, alligator cracks, is what they call them. And sometimes they'll they'll get so bad that they'll form a scar, and you have to sit there and then seal it, or else it'll just spread, kind of like like some of these pictures that we've seen where you got grass growing. That's basically what. It does. That's how the roads start deteriorating. Yeah. You start seeing them with, with alligator cracks. Yeah. yeah. That also prevents water from getting underneath it up. That's right. That's, that's correct. I was going to mention that. 
That's right. It, it, so uh, another question that I got to Hector is, how about that patch repair truck that we bought a few years back? That, uh, are we still operating that? Yeah, every day. We, I mean, we, we use it every day. Um, sad to say, I don't think we utilize it 100% like we should, because like we should, because it doesn't really work. You know, some of us, it's supposed to be a hot box. The hot box, right. is, it, it makes your, your hot mix, instead of cold mix, it, it heats it up and makes it into a tar-like substance where you're able to, to uh, uh, cover your, your potholes and stuff like that. Well, that's, that part of the, of the truck doesn't work. Everything else does. We still utilize it to take our equipment over there.